Still using SQLi sync to create your tables? Well, it can work well for prototyping, but in real world it will create problems. For example, what if you need to change a column or roll back an update? And that's where SQLize migrations come in. In this video, I will show you how to set up version controlled SQLize migrations in your TypeScript project using Umzook so you can take control of your database schema like a pro. I am in SQLize Express project. Earlier, we created a user model and then a table for it using SQLize sync method. If you would like to learn how we did that, check out the video on how to set up SQLize and Express. And as usual, the code for this video is available on GitHub. The link is in the description below. Although sync method can be useful in development, it is not very extensible because if you need to change the table, you will have to drop already existing one, update the model and resync it. A better approach is to use migrations. With migrations, you can transfer your existing database into another state and vice versa. Those state transitions are saved in migration files, which describe how to get to the new state and how to revert the changes in order to get back to the old state. And just like other files, migrations are a part of your code and are version controlled. SQLize has a very good support for migrations. Unfortunately, migrations in SQLize are not in TypeScript yet, so in order to use TypeScript with SQLize migrations, we will be using Umzug library instead of SQLize CLI. Umzug is a framework agnostic migration tool for Node. It provides a clean API for running and rolling back tasks. Let's go ahead and install Umzug and TS Node libraries in our project. Unlike other TypeScript files that are being compiled in the disk directory, we will be compiling and running migrations on the fly with a TS node. The entry file to run migrations will be migrate.js. We're going to create it in the root of the folder and put the following code. This code is going to require a TS node register and the umzu configuration file that we are going to create in the src folder next. TypeScript ESLint will complain about require imports. We can turn off uh, no require imports rule in eslint config.mjs file. In the src folder, we will create umzug.ts file. We will import umzug and sqlize storage from umzug. Sqlize and options from sqlize and config from config.ts file. First, we need to create a new SQLize instance by instantiating SQLize with the database connection parameters that are pulled from the environment variables into config.ts file. Next, we will instantiate and export migrator, passing options to Umzug. Migration options point to the folder where we will be storing migrations. We're going to put them in the data folder. When specifying the path to migrations, we uh, do it relative to the folder we are currently in. Underscore underscore dear name tells Umzug that we are currently in the SRC folder. Since Umzug is framework agnostic, we will specify SQLize as the context. We define storage as SQLize storage. Basically, we're going to store the migration history in the database in the migrations table. Finally, we will send the migration logs to the console. One last thing to do is to export migration type that will be used in the migrations. In package.json file, let's define several scripts that we will be using with the migrations. The first script will be migrate. We will use .env to load environment variables from the .env file and call the command node migrate up. The migrate rollback script will be very similar. We will call node migrate down. Finally, a script to create a migration will call node migrate create. We're all set. Now we are ready to write an actual migration. But before we do that, if you are learning something new, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Writing migrations using Umzug is exactly the same as writing migrations using SQLize. Therefore, you will be referring to the SQLize documentation on migrations. If you will need more information on how to configure and run Umzug, you can check its documentation on npm. Let's run the migration create command and name the migration users table.ts. 
If this is the first migration and migrations folder doesn't exist yet, you may have to explicitly pass the folder where you want your migrations to live. In our case, this is SRC data migrations. The same folder will be specified in umzug.ts file. We're going to remove everything that's in the migrations file and put the following code. We will import data types in SQLize from SQLize and migration type from umzug.ts file. The way migrations work is you have two functions, up and down. You write the up function to create tables, columns, or indexes, and you write the down function to undo whatever up function does. This way you can revert the migration. In production, you will probably never revert the migrations. However, in development, reverting is very useful because creating database schema is an iterative process. Okay, let's create the up function. It will be an async function that will return migration type and it will take SQLize as context. We will call getQueryInterface first and then create table method. Our table will be called users. We will define ID of type big integer, primary key, and auto increment. Name column will be type of string, and we won't allow null. The same thing goes for email column. Finally, we will add created at and updated at timestamp columns. The down function will be pretty easy. All it will do is drop the table users that we created in the up function. As I mentioned before, we will be running migrations using TS node, so we won't need them compiled. If you like, you can go to the tsconfig.json file and exclude umzug.cs file and migrations folder from the compilation in order not to bloat your disk directory with the unnecessary files. The last thing to do before we run the migrations is to remove SQLize sync code in index.ts file. This code created users table. Since we're going to create users table using the migration, we need to drop the existing users table created by SQLize sync. I will use table plus client to do that. We're all set. Let's run migrate command. This command will create the users table. We can inspect it in table plus client. When we inspect the database structure, everything looks good except for that we forgot to make email column unique. As I said earlier, creating the database table is an iterative process. This is where the down migration function comes handy. Let's run the command migrate rollback. This will drop the users table. In the users table migration file, let's add unique true attributes to the email and run the migration again. Now, when inspecting the user's table, we can see that the unique email index has been added to the email column. This is great. At this point, you probably have a question. How do models relate to migrations? SQLize models define the structure of your data in code, including fields, types, and validations, and are used at runtime to interact with the database. Migrations, on the other hand, are version-controlled scripts that apply changes to actual database schema, such as creating or modifying tables. While models describe how your data should look, migrations ensure those definitions are reflected in the database over time. SQLize does not automatically sync models to migrations, so you must keep them consistent manually. Now that your database is version controlled and ready to go, it's time to level up your data relationships. In the next video, we will dive into one-to-many associations in SQLize, like how a user can have many posts. It's a key concept for building real-world apps, so be sure to check it out.